Hey there, welcome back everybody. So this is the Nathan rig that I created in the previous video. If you didn't see that, I recommend that you watch the video on how to create a rig for specifically for motion capture. We're just gonna confirm that this is a good rig and we're gonna do that by importing a motion and confirming that it can be applied directly without any problems. So I'm just importing a motion and I'm changing the source to the target motion. And I can see that I'm able to um, easily um, animate using that. And just to confirm, I'm going to load in another motion and just demonstrate that this can actually um, be driven from some from a couple different motions without any problems. If I change it to the pushing motion, then I can see that that's working fine. So I've confirmed that you know with a couple different motions, I'm able to um, control the rig without any problems. So that means I've created a good rig that I'm ready to work with. So. How do we proceed? I'm gonna go back to just my ready um, rig um, without any animations in it. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna to switch to an animation workspace because I'm gonna start really focusing more on animation. Going to Windows, Workspaces, and selecting Animation, and that will switch to an animation workspace, which brings up uh, the time editor in the bottom. So I'll be using this time editor to really kind of start animating the character. So I'm going to show in this video that it's possible to work entirely with FBX. I do need to create a character definition for my motion capture, but I can do that in a much simpler way here. So I'm going to load in an FBX file here, and we can see that there's an animation happening in that FBX file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the hips here, which has you know keyframes on it for, mo for motion capture. Um, and I'm going to go to character none, and then I'm going to select create control rig and say define, because I want to define a new one based on this existing skeleton that's from the motion capture. There's a cool way to create the definition without having to manually assign anything, and that is to select the hips in the outliner, and then click on this button here, which is load skeleton definition. I click on load skeleton definition, use the HIK template, and it will automatically assign um, all of the uh, bones to the correct joints, so I don't have to do that manually. So that's a really nice kind of fast way to bypass having to create a character definition for the motion capture. We only need to do this once, and then we can load in many FBX and animate many FBX files. <clears throat> so now I want to bind the Nathan character, that is my, my rendering rig, um, my character to the FBX model, um, and I do that by going to back to the Nathan custom rig, and then I change the source to the new character definition that comes from the motion capture. As soon as I do that, you're gonna see that he'll start animating based on that motion. So to get started with the, with the BVH hips of the motion capture data, just to make that clear, I'm gonna rename this to a motion um, rig. So we have our Nathan rig, which is the one we're trying to animate, and the motion rig, which is for the motion capture. I'm going to select the BVH hips from the motion rig, and then I'm going to click on this button that says add selected content from the scene. And that will create a clip, and now it says that the time editor is driving the animation. So this time editor is now making this animation happen. And I can zoom out and zoom in. Um, I can, if I shift this forward in time, you see that he does nothing, and then the animation starts when it plays over there. So everything is now being controlled from the time editor. And at this point, it's very easy to drag in new motions. What I can do now is I can bring in over any other FBX files for motion and just start animating with those. So I'm gonna bring in this other FBX file. I'm just gonna drag and drop it into the time editor. I do apply here. And it will come in as another track that has a different motion, okay? If these don't overlap, then I will see the motion play out. And as soon as it over goes to the other one, it will switch to a different motion. So this is doing full body motion and having a, um, the animation switch between full body motions. We can see that it's doing this pushing motion and then it switches to this kind of stepping over motion. So if, only, if I'm doing full body motion animation like this where I'm trying to mix motions together, what I'd really like to happen is for them to blend together. That is for this motion to kind of need lead naturally into the next motion so I can create a narrative or a story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this up a little bit so that they overlap. And now I'm going to just drag and drop the second clip. Now I'm just going to drag and drop the second clip onto the first. And by overlapping them, 
it'll now transition between them. You'll see this transition take place. It's still strange in between, and we're gonna fix that in just a moment. In order to fix this transition, what I want to use is called a relocator. And a relocator will say that I, I want the second motion to start at the end of the first motion. So to blend them together, they have to be matching up. It's not too difficult to do this. You click on both clips and you use shift to select them or you can kind of drag select. We're gonna select both clips and I'm gonna right click and go to relocate and then match relocators. That tells Maya that I wanna match the second clip to the first clip. So I select this. I need to select the root of the, out, of the um, character in the outliner and I click this button to make sure that that's selected in the um, panel. So selecting the root of the outliner and then this blue button. How do I want to transition from one to the next? I want to turn this off, disable use root hips, and then just click this button again. And this makes sure that I'm matching the hips to the hips. I want to match the two of the same things together. So here I'm going to match the hips from the first motion to the hips in the second motion. So I click previous here and I select in between clips because this is the range that I want to match. Um, and now I want to change this. It may have been on full X, Y, Z. I want to change this to project it along Y and project it along Y. The reason I do that is because the animations may be in a different orientation frame. That is the motion capture data may come in a different X, Y, Z axis. I want to make sure everything is happening along uh, for a human character. In this case, I want everything to happen along the Y axis. So with that, I click match. We will see that now these motions are blended together. That is, they'll transition from one to the next. So at this point, um, I essentially have done what I'd like to from a technical perspective, which is to have the first motion blend into the second. So what that means is now it's all entirely an animation problem. You can see that it doesn't quite work because the feet are um, not planted properly and I want them to kind of blend more naturally. So this is an animation problem. Um, and as an animator, I have a lot of control over what I can do. Um, I can move the clips closer together or further apart. This will change the, dirt, the time at which the transition happens. So maybe it happens at an earlier step or a later step. That looks more natural where he stands up first and then starts doing this next motion, right? Just by shifting the clips around in the time editor, I can change the timing at which one motion blends into the next to make something more natural. Now I could, I could drag out the duration of the blend and maybe because the foot is already planted that might work okay. This is really getting now finally into animation where I can create an animation to give the feeling that I want. And I just want to end this by showing that you can work with many more FBX clips at this point. So now that we have a a primary rig and a motion rig, we can bring in many FBX, FBX clips into the time editor to create a continuous animation. Um, if I need to, and I can extend the time of the frame of the time of my animation just by modifying this in the time editor. And I'm going to bring this and make this a lot shorter. So we have a pushing motion that becomes a stepping over motion. And then maybe right at this point, I want him to start walking again and not keep stepping around. So I'm just going to come to my FBX files and bring in one more FBX clip. You'll see that it um, drops it in here. I'm not sure why, but for some reason it changes the duration of the animation again. And I just want to set this back to a thousand. Um, and I have this third clip now that you can see the first two have been blended together. Now the third one's not blended in. And we can do that by just following the same steps. I drag this out so that it's a blend between motions. And we see that the relocation is incorrect. So I'm again, I'm going to select the hips. I'm gonna select these two clips by shift selecting the two clips that I wanna blend. Now I right click, I do relo relocate, match relocator. Click the blue arrow. Um, uncheck this and click the blue arrow again to get so I'm matching hips to hips. Do the previous clip matching to the current one. I want the match time to be in between the times that they're blending and make the projection on the Y axis and then do match. So that will create now a blend between the second and the third clip. 
and it looks pretty good. Um, a good way to tell from an animation perspective, if you have a good match, um, is that the character should be on the same, the weight should be on the same foot when it transitions from one motion to the next. And this is not quite correct because you see his weight is on the left foot, but that's the one that gets picked up. So it's not on the right, the weight is not on the right foot. And I fixed that just by changing the, um, by moving the slider so that the timing happens at a different time. Hopefully when they're on the bow, weight is on the same foot. So I'm going to bring this in now and I can further um, fix this by adjusting the starting and ending times. So it's really about finding the right frame at which to start the transition. There the right foot is now firmly planted. So that's basically how you um, start working with the time editor in Maya. I haven't talked at all about how you might blend just the arms or just have arm motions happen about our arbitrary times, but you do that, you can do that by adding more tracks that happen at the same time. What I have shown is how to start with a rig and with a properly rigged character from my previous video, how to use the time editor to create anim animations that transition from one motion to the next. And this should give you a lot of flexibility for working with animations where you want things to transition and create a kind of narrative that moves from one thing to the next. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you have a chance to kind of try doing some animation in this way. And we are in the process of creating a new repository for motions called the DMD Motion Lab at Florida Gulf Coast University. If you go to dmdmotionlab.com, you're gonna find a whole collection of animations. We're building a new open library for motions to do motion study research. So that's it. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video.